All right. Uh, welcome back to Drew and Me, where we talk about music, movies, and whatever else we want to talk about. And today we're really talking about whatever else we want to talk about. We're talking about um, sports teams that are our favorite, favorite sports teams and favorite sports movies. And we were talking about uh, Chip's favorite um, sports team for Philadelphia, which was the 1990 Philadelphia Eagles. And now we're talking about Blake's favorite baseball team for the Phillies, which was the 2008 Philadelphia Phillies team, which was the second time they won the World Series. That's right. And it was, uh, yeah, 2008. And this team, like the characters on this team almost is something out of a movie where you have like Chase Utley, who is, you know, the hard nosed, like, you know, Philly tough player then you have like just this absolute slugger home run hitter and ryan howard you know jimmy rollins who is like the cool shortstop who may have won the mvp that no he, he won it later i think but um and then you have like cole hamels you know like the good looking young pitcher the flying hawaiian in shane victorino like uh jason worth who is nuts <laughs> And then, you know, Pat Burrell, who is just a total scumbag and, you know, finally won. You know, we drafted him. He was our scumbag. And also you forget that, you know, Jamie Moyer was on that team who was 78 years old yes. when he was pitching. And he was literally he was throwing his fastball was in the mid like, like you know, like high 70s and people just couldn't hit it. And then there was Joe Blanton, who was a pitcher and wasn't good at pitching. And then he was hitting. This is when in the National League, there were still, you know, the pitchers still hit. And I remember I knew we were going to win the World Series when Joe Blanton hit a home run to left field and it went out. And then I, I think the <laughs> the oddest part or another odd wrinkle was that the final game was or like one of the games was abridged where it rained and they had to pick up the game the next day which was crazy and like That's when that right. which was insane and then when that happened i was like you know what this is it this is how we get screwed out of a world series because this bizarre act of god happened and then they ended up winning and it was like you know it was truly such a lovable team oh and then brad lidge who couldn't who forgot how to pitch <laughs> after that but was you know like uh he was absolute lights out that year as a closer um yeah just such a fun team to cheer for and then of course uh at the end of the parade chase utley having one of the most iconic moments ever where he yelled world effing champions you know like at the top of like at, like at the end and everybody and by the way an underrated moment of that is if you look in the background jason worth just stands up and he's wearing two red hulk hands on his fists and just stands up and like puts them in the air and it's not clear how he got them it's not clear how he got both of them on but he was still wearing them and yeah it's just a, a team that i will always have so much affection for so um was that the game where jason worth was smoking the cigar at the end of the game too yes yeah that does sound correct yeah he went full cigar uh at, like at the like on the field afterwards was was really cool which you don't see anymore um okay. yeah and and here's how likable this team was is that the amount of goatees and soul patches on yes. that team is something that I would like to lose to history because there were a lot of them and they were so lovable that that's something, you know, we're able to not speak about generally, but yeah, that's the favorite that that's a, you know, there's a 2017 Eagles, but you know, like the 2008 Phillies are, are right up there. I feel like every good Phillies team always has that. We like they're never <laughs> yeah. that clean cut group. Cause like, I still remember the, uh, the, the 90, whiz kids yeah the 93 uh the 93 phillies and it was just you know john crook who was you know 900 pounds and, and you, 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 uh, <laughs> they and they were just like and you had a uh, wild wild thing what was his name uh uh kurt uh oh uh mitch williams mitch williams and, yeah yeah and, you, and of course nails you know and it mm -hmm. was just like and just these just like crazy just dirty over like just overgrown and like but they were almost world champions yeah yeah, it was love love that team. Yeah. Yeah, like I think it's 
really kind of weird that when Kurt Schilling was on the team, we didn't win a World Series, but when he wasn't there, we won one. But then he won like two World Series, I think. Like he won one with the Red Sox and one with the Diamondbacks. Like, mm-hmm. like definitely a really rare talent. But um, no. Uh, when the Phillies are winning, they definitely have a strong rotation. They have good pitching. Mm-hmm. Was Holiday on that 2018? It was just before. So Holiday was in the next uh round. I believe he was 2010, I think, or he was maybe on that 09 team. Because I remember they lost in 09 and then they had a a pitching rotation at one point of like Cliff Lee, Roy Halliday, and Roy, um, Roy, and Roy Oswald. Oswald. Yeah. yeah. And and Hamels also was like yeah. it just that was the year where, you know. That would be the year it's like, oh, that's the pitching staff without Jamie Moyer on it that would win the win Joe Bland that would win the World Series. And yet, yeah. you know, it's, it just goes to show you how hard it is and how random it can be. Yeah. Um, like now the Phillies were definitely like really like cooking at that time with Rollins, Howard and like Chase mm-hmm. Utley and everything and like because they got to the World Series again the next year in mm-hmm. in um 2009 and I feel like a lot of Phillies fans have already forgotten but Pedro Martinez was on that team. <laughs> yeah, he, and he was great like he was great for us that year too. Um, oh, and Carlos Ruiz, we forgot to mention. Oh. Chooch. Chooch. Yeah, the most lovable player. He was a great, yeah. great catcher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really good. Very un- He was a very underrated player for sure. I did, uh, uh, this is a couple years later, but in 2014, so some of those guys are still around. Ryan Howard did a, he had the Ryan Howard Literacy Foundation, and mm-hmm. they would do a fundraiser every year at the Franklin Institute where they would do this like silent auction and, a dinner, and then they would have a comedy show because guys like comedy. So, and it was mostly just, I know it wasn't mostly, but like all of the players and their wives were there. And there's probably maybe like 200 people there total, I'm guessing. And I was asked, it was through Helium, I was asked to do the comedy show. Oh my God. And we were going to be able to meet Ryan Howard and everything. So it was, if you remember Tommy Jonigan, really good yeah. comic from the Midwest who I haven't seen him in a while. I don't know. Me uh, neither, he's so he funny. Writing, writing, so funny. They hired him. They like flew him out to do the show. And then I opened for him and I walked out and it was where you performed. They, they moved the comedy show into the, it was kind of like a lecture hall almost. Mm-hmm. Like a, it was just this like raised like lecture hall and uh, deuces Rogers from action news. who I met that night and we've become friends since then. He, he was the MC for the night. And so he brought ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chip Chantry. And I'm not in the room but you walk in like where where like a, a professor would enter, you know. And yeah. I walk in, and the front two rows are just all of those Phillies and their wives. Oh my god! And it was just like so. It was like Shay Sutley <laughs> and Ryan Howard and all, like all those guys. And it was just it was a, a wild a wild experience just to have all of them just staring at me. Crazy. That's incredible. Nice. Um. Did you tell any jokes about the team? <laughs> no, but one time at Helium, I think it's a couple years after that, maybe it would before or after that. The, the Phillies were not doing well at one point. Mm-hmm. And I kind of made a joke about, oh, the Phillies kind of suck this year or whatever. And I didn't realize, I think it was like the third baseman at the time. It wasn't a well known guy, was sitting in the front row. And I didn't, and I didn't realize. And like nothing ever happened. Like, right. Nothing came of it, but I, I was mortified afterwards because I didn't ask. But yeah. Drew, do you have a do you have a favorite a favorite team? Um kind of along the same lines as what uh Blake was talking about. Probably 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 the nineteen eighty Phillies. And this is like kind of for a weird reason. When I was ten years old, I went to a local thing. And it's weird. I can't even really find the book anymore, but there was a book event at the Radnor Library mm-hmm. that, um, um, Robin H. Williams had co-written a book with an author and the author was there 
and they did a trivia contest. And then, like, yeah, when I was 10 years old, I loved, loved, loved baseball so much. It was, like, my favorite sport. So, um, yeah, yeah I actually won the trivia contest. Um, wow. Nice. And Hell yeah. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think the question I won on was like, what was the most common baseball name? And the answer was Williams. Oh, um, really? That makes sense. Bernie, yeah. Mitch, Matt. I won't do this. Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa. <laughs> um, Ricky. And the question I got wrong was, uh, uh, what team what was the team that bo jackson played for mm. and i said giants but he never played for the giants the answer was the was Royals? the uh the california An angels mm -hmm. he did and he played angels. football too right like he was he um he was he a raider i guess we'll never know raider. yeah i think he may have been a raider Say what you will about Bo Jackson. That man could play a sport. He was a Raider. He knows oh, things, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, because I won the trivia competition, I actually got to um, choose a prize, and they had this great tape of the Phillies from, like, the like 1900 to 2000. So, I learned about, like, Chuck Klein and Grover Cleveland Alexander, Chuck Klein, nice. he won the Triple Crown, and Grover Cleveland Alexander was big on Cy Youngs. And actually, this year, Ranger Suarez, for like the first like half the season, he had like a win loss record that was up there with like Grover Cleveland Alexander, but he did fall off a few starts ago, unfortunately. But um. No, so on this tape, like they loved the 1980 World Series because that was the, the only Phillies team that had won the World Series. Like they talked about the '93 team, but then 2000, like they talked about the manager Dallas Green, like coming in and he was great, and then Pete Rose and like Tug McGraw, and then just how like all these great players like kind of came together and they made like a winning team and they talked about how they won a lot in the seventies, but how they really kind of put it together and had it going in the 1980 world series. And of course, Mitt was on the team. Um, he was playing third base and um, yeah, I don't want to go down a big rabbit hole here, but <laughs> I think Pete Rose should be in the hall of fame. Just going to say, I think he should be there like with the, the hall of fame such a mess it's such a mess <laughs> it's like just put him in like put him in put bonds in like who get like yeah. it is all the state like whatever you know put a little asterisk or something or like this right. guy cheated and he's a pig and like this guy did steroids or whatever. like just like put him know. in the basement or something do you know what I mean? yeah. yeah 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 i'm with you hmm oh um a Philly will probably get into the Hall of Fame next year. Uh, Bailey Wagner is going to get in. Oh, oh really? yeah. Wow. Jeez, he played in a weird Phillies era, right? <laughs> like, it's just, it's just like, if only we had him in his prime when we had a team that could, like, win something, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's because so funny. they got him before Lidge, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think he was, yeah. like, pre-Lidge. I think Larry Boa was probably still the manager when he was there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so oh, it was like Charlie, Charlie Manuel. Manuel. Yeah. The most likable manager of all time. He's a guy that I thought was a moron when they signed him because of the way he talked. And yeah. it, it, it literally taught me the, a lesson that I learned with Doug Peterson too. And hopefully with Nick Sirianni is that just because someone is like inarticulate in a news conference or something doesn't mean they're not a very smart person who's like really good at their job yes. and that was a thing where like you know charlie had that like southern accent you know what i mean like and he would like mumble sometimes and then doug was really nervous for his first you know press conference and you know coach sirianni like 
did that he, he didn't have the best performance in his first news conference either and, and it's like oh wow no that has absolutely nothing to do with the ability to coach a team it's just two different skills absolutely. you can talk to media or and maybe some like some people can do both but it is completely different skill set yeah the people who knew charlie really well like um the announcers and the staff they just said mm -hmm. he would just get kind of shy Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in like press conferences and like it wasn't like really kind of the kind of conversations even he had in the clubhouse well like there were times when he could be a lot more articulate mm -hmm. and because you're right it's not a conversation it's people yelling questions at you yeah. who like aren't your friends you know and yeah. like you like and they're trying to get you in trouble so yeah of course like why how could anyone be good at that right. responding to that stuff yeah and mm -hmm. uh again not to like ruffle any feathers but i did hear that howard eskin isn't allowed in the philly stadium anymore he's out no he's out he is out howard's out mm -hmm. fur coat and all mm-hmm <laughs> Oh, man. So in the interest of time, we should probably talk about our favorite sports movie. Now, this didn't have to be connected to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, so this could just be like a favorite sports movie. Um, so let's see. Let's start with Blake for this. Mine was not a good movie, but I did really like it. And it was the not even the original, the remake of The Longest Yard, the 2005 remake. And it was uh, starring Adam Sandler, Chris Rock and Burt Reynolds. And then the rest of the cast, they stopped hiring actors to be in it. So they went from those top three, which is incredible. And then fourth on the call sheet is Nelly. Full stop. Just Nelly, uh, and then Michael Irvin. Th this cast is un is unbelievable. Then Michael Irvin, who is a Hall of Fame wide receiver, Bill Goldberg, who can act, he can act, but also professional wrestler Terry Crews, who has uh become was also a professional football player at one point, and he played my maybe my favorite character in the history of a movie. Uh, his name was Cheeseburger, and honestly, continues to be in in many ways in cinema. Cheeseburger Eddie. And his thing was he was a prisoner slash football player and he would sneak McDonald's in, in, into the uh, into the prison and he would like it was I there's I don't even know why I'm going to do this right now because it's not going to do it justice. But there's a scene where like everyone is so hyped celebrating and then he pops out of nowhere and he's shirtless and just wearing like like football pants and just goes it ain't easy being cheesy and then he pulls like six hamburgers out of his pants and starts throwing them around the crowd and like flexing his pecs you know like the way that he does it so oh, che cheeseburger eddie and then there's also like tracy morgan's in it who's so funny bill romanowski one of the worst people by all accounts of all time but uh also a line a uh, linebacker speaking of steroids kevin nash stone cold steve austin brian bosworth like all these guys and cool of course, Cloris Leachman was also in this movie. Oh so yeah, it was unbelievable, like a bunch of like announcers. And it, it was it when I watched it, I must have been it was the perfect humor, Adam Sandler sports humor for like a what however old I was, like 15, 16 years old. You know, it was it, it was literally engineered genetically for me and my friends. So it was, yeah, I, I love love that movie. That's amazing. And Adam Sandler is like, he's married to Courtney Cox in the movie, I think, or something like that. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course he was. <laughs> he was. Oh, that's so funny. Like, I feel like Happy Madison or the production company that, that made that movie, they, they were trying to make, like, they were trying to do a remake, but also maybe a cooler version of of the water boy since that was like such a big hit. So yeah, they kind of had Adam Sandler like kind of play the cool smug guy. 
that's that is such a good observation yeah it is like all right it is football water boy was football this is football let's keep let's keep the the football rolling yeah i never thought of it that way yeah i haven't seen the original i i should probably check it out at some point yeah yeah for sure um yeah, I remember I saw the new longest yard in the theater, and uh -huh. I I thought it was like funny in places, and that's kind of what I liked about it, but didn't really work as a story. But correct, you you're know, totally right. Really matter, so it didn't yeah. have to. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work at all, and it didn't have to at all. Um. Have you seen the longest yard trip? I actually haven't. I I've definitely seen parts of it, but I've never, I never sat down beginning to end to watch that Sandman classic. Well, what did you watch instead, Chip? Huh? What what what's your move? If not the longest yard remake, what could you have possibly chosen? <laughs> the Cosby Show. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> his son played football for um Texas, the University of Texas, and. I think his name was Quan Cosby. And that also may not be accurate. But Chip, as you talk, I'm going to look up to see. I think that's if great. that's. I mean, Quan... yeah, I I want it to be true. I want to make I was happen. right. Yeah, I was right. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I was correct. And uh, yeah, he played a little bit in the NFL. Yeah. But... And anyway, we didn't expect to talk about that today, but well, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, w w what was your movie, Chip? Uh, so, I went a little off the beaten path for a sports movie. It's not, uh, you know, I wasn't a big team sports kid, and our neighborhood, my neighborhood growing up wasn't, uh, we were always finding that weird thing. Uh, so, I went for a, a 1986 BMX hit, uh, the, can the Canadian uh, export Rad. Uh, the movie Rad from 1986 <laughs> that my brother and I just wore out the VHS tape. Uh, just all of our friends, we would just watch this movie about competitive BMX riding, and there'd be like eight kids in our living room, and we'd just watch it like every day in the summer and then just go outside because like all the bikes would be on the lawn and then just try to like build ramps and jump off of stuff and just, and it was just. It was the best. It's if you have you guys seen the movie Rad before? No, I haven't no seen but it. it's on my list now. It's it should not be. It is. Um, <laughs> uh, it's not a great movie, but I just love it so much that it's. It, it was this Canadian production, I think, and it was it was produced by Jack Schwartzman, who it was Talia Shire's from Rocky, Talia Shire's husband, and Jason Schwartzman's father. You know, and yeah. of course, there's the Francis Ford Coppola. The Coppola's, kind of, yeah. Yeah, that whole vineyard there. And <laughs> so, like, he produced it, and Hal Needham directed it, who's this, like, famous, like, stuntman, I guess, and stunt coordinator. And they're like, well, he can just direct a movie, which he did. It's 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 very – it's not a good movie, but it's such a fun act action movie. It stars this, this guy, Bill Allen, who plays this – of course, it's just, like, in the 80s. He's, like, a 27-year-old man who's playing a, a senior in high school. And of course, <laughs> it's him and his two buddies. It's his him and his this one guy and girl. The three of them like are really good at riding their bikes around, and they deliver papers, and they doing all these stunts and all this stuff. And then for whatever reason, uh, this giant, this major BMX track competition comes to town, and it was called Hell Track, and it was like the only time as kids we were allowed to say hell, so it was called yeah. Hell Track. And it was this, and it's just this, you know how like in, in Willy Wonka when he like opens the door to the factory for the first time, like that's to a kid, that's what this BMX course is. Cause it's not just like a loop. It's like all it's, it, first of all, it's like a 20 foot drop. And then it, there's all these obstacles and there's these tunnels. And then there's literally, it was sponsored. The movie was partially sp sponsored. I had because it had product placement by the serial kicks the breakfast cereal <laughs> kicks. Yeah. And so as part of Helltrack, 
you as you're riding, you would have there was this giant kicks bowl where you would go into the kicks bowl and then you would have to come out on the spoon and jump off of the spoon oh. to the, like the next obstacle of this race. And so this it comes down, and so it's like all of these. The story is like all of these major bike riders, BMX riders from all over the country are coming. There are all these big sponsors, and then this young upstart, he's gonna try to compete as well, even though he's from this little small town. And it's our Bill Allen. He was the the main character, the, the the sort of his foil, the the nemesis, who was the number one rider at the time, was played by Bart Connor. Who and he went. He also went by Bart. I forget Bart Taylor oh was his name God. in the movie, but he was played by Bart Connor, who was the year before on the U.S. Olympic gymnastics team. <laughs> so he also wasn't an actor, but was an Olympic gymnast. And they're like, he can be in a BMX movie. Uh, yeah. The, the love interest was Lori Laughlin from Full House, oh, and cool. also from Jail. <laughs> rest in power. Uh, yeah. Rest in power. Uh, Talia Shire. So of course Jack Schwartzman. Cast the uh, cast his wife Taya Shire played uh, the uh, the main character's mother, and um, not a well acted movie, but it's just this fun little town high school movie where, but you know it's all about BMX and it it has what every great eighties sports movie has. I'm gonna put put them up there, the the trifecta as I like to call them, Rad, Teen Wolf, and the Karate Kid all have some of the best cheesiest like power rock anthems you, you know what i mean like like where it's like uh you know you know you're the best around nothing's gonna ever bring you down like the, the yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. I love that song. Oh, yeah and then so like teen wolf has one it's called like win in the end and it's just mm -hmm. so catchy and then this one has one called break the ice and there's one or two others that are just these sort of like no-name guys mm -hmm. rock star guys that are just belting it out but they're these great '80s cheesy sport anthems. So uh, that's, that's incredible. That's what makes it, and not a good movie. But my brother and I would watch the VHS tape every day. Okay. Um, confession: I have not seen <laughs> Teen Wolf. Um, so I remember being on like TV a lot, and I remember like looking at it in passing. But not really getting it. But um, yeah, I guess like Teen Wolf's basically like he's on the basketball team and he turns into a werewolf. And as we all know, werewolf's great at basketball. Great, great at <laughs> basketball. Also, infamously teenaged <laughs> werewolves, yes. Yes, generally teenage in their werewolves. teens. Yeah. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm reading uh, imdb.com has uh, like often like trivia and quotes and stuff like at the bottom of their cast lists and stuff. Yeah. And one piece of trivia from Rad is that filming was delayed because the hell track starting ramp was so high was so that high. none of the riders wanted to go down. It. Yes, they outright refused because it was like made for a movie, not. This, yeah. So and it's literally like a, a straight drop. And yeah, I it's think like, it was no. Like it was like 25 feet at one point and and these are actual professional BMX riders mm -hmm. and so they're like yeah we're not doing this so they had to they had to bring it down like 5 or 10 feet yeah because they BMX in real life not yeah. um, not a fake movie not that a movie and they're them. like yeah we'll break our legs and then not be able to ride anymore yeah yeah, yeah that, that ramp was kid tested mother approved it was it, it was, was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so mm. uh Great cheesy eighties. Uh, That's a great pick. Movie. Yeah. How about um, how about you, Drew? Yo, get to that in a second. Okay. Question for you, Blake. Yeah. Where did you go to middle school? Did you go to Valley Forge or TE? I don't speak about this publicly, but I did go to Valley Forge Middle School. Yeah. Which which one did you go to? Um. Yeah, I went to TE, and oh, okay. the eighth grade teacher, she was in a kick. So. Focus group. Really? And she said that she was one of the kids that didn't like the cereal. So that, that, that was hard. Well, yeah. they yeah. did test it. They didn't say the kids liked it. They yeah. said the kids yeah. did test it. They That's so interesting. It. Yeah. Wow. They, um, so we would eat kicks all of the time. Oh, so just good. Of, just because it was in that movie. And like, yeah. we loved it. Uh, another person who didn't like kicks, apparently, if I could speak out of school, but apparently, according to my wife, her mother wrote a strongly worded letter to the good people at Kicks, 
because they added sugar to their formula after like a number of years, like they came out there and they put mm-hmm. more sugar in it. And, and she's, she was like a nurse and she's like, you're saying that this is good for you. And you keep adding sugar to it. And she wrote a strongly letter worded to kicks. Someone had to do it. Somebody did. Yep. Mm-hmm. Someone did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like years later, they just make kept making kicks like really unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Like they kind of had, they kind of had the berry berry kicks. Yeah, yes. I remember I go I go to my friend's house and eat berry berry kicks and I'm like, this is just like eating candy. So good, you know. It's yeah, like you're so right. Sweet. Oh, it's so sweet. It's so awesome. Mm-hmm. It's and, it, and it, cereal is such a such a a, a a what's the word I'm looking for? It's such a scam because it's not good for you. Even like the good like bran flakes. Like you're like oh mm-hmm. it's, good. it's like it's all sugar. Yeah, and, no, it's not good. Yeah, and I I still remember when I was a little kid, they had C three PO cereal, <laughs> like from Star Wars, and it was yeah, human cyborg like, relations. Yeah, yes, and mm-hmm. it was these little like kind of like figure eight kind of things, and they <laughs> they had like sort of like honey on them, and they were delicious. And then they got rid of those, and then a number of years later, they Kellogg's then came out with Kellogg's Pro Grain, and I was in like middle school at this point, and it was like <laughs> I still remember the sport that they. Uh, sort of attached to it was the Iron Man triathlon. So it was the cereal for triathletes. But I rem- I was like, this is just C three PO cereal. Like it was, it was the same exact thing. But no, they it's just for athletes. It as as a program for athletes. Yeah, not for not for space robots. No, 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 no. That's great. Yeah. Nice. Um. Yeah. To get to my picks for uh, the movies, uh, I'm kind of in between two. Like, favorite is probably Bull Durham, and then the one I like to watch the most is probably is probably is probably little is probably Little Big League, which um yeah oh who's in that's about this kid. His grandfather he owns the twins, and then his grandfather dies, and he gets the twins and then he becomes like the manager and he's like in charge of the twins. So it's like a great, like, oh, I love that movie. Like it, it, like for growing up, loving the sport of baseball, it gets into it so well, like the nitty gritty and even being like a manager and having to do paperwork and then having to like watch the players pitch and bat and it really gets into the inside outs of like the game and um uh great pick that's such a good pick thanks and one of the relief pictures is actually played by Scott Patterson who was in Gilmore Girls uh, he played Luke in Gilmore Girls and um i think he is actually from Milltown New Jersey he's either from Milltown hmm. or Camden um yeah, he's like somewhat local, so mm-hmm. I'm guessing he, I'm probably guessing he has he probably has to be a oh Phillies fan. Yeah, yeah. So he's great in the movie. The movie's awesome. I love the protagonist. I think he's very likable, and he kind of goes through the hero arc where he's doing great at the beginning, and then he kind of hits the wall, and then he kind of rallies and stuff like that. And kind of what you were talking about, Chip, with the great movies from the 80s, um, he was also in a great Nintendo movie from the 80s. He was in The Wizard. Oh, yeah, is that the one about the little kid that like was Fred Savage in that? Yeah, yeah, yes. Fred Savage is in it. Like his younger brother, he's like really good at Nintendo games, so yes. he goes to like California to compete in like the Nintendo. That's yes. sick. tournament. I remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So, um, no, yeah, I first watched. Little Big League when I was like 11 or 12 and I was like, where has this movie been my whole life? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's amazing. And it has that kind of kid's perspective of it and it kind of gets back to what you were saying, Chip, about really liking teams or movies like when you're like 11 or 12 or 13 yeah. and kind of middle school, like 
kind of you're growing, you're maturing, and like these things are amazing. Um, nobody picked it, but I remember the 2003 2004 e e e Eagles team. Mm -hmm. That was a, really, a pretty yeah. big team. Yep. N I'm not sure if that was. It might have been the year after that they went to the Super Bowl against the Patriots, but I remember they had T.O. that year and he scored like 13 or 14 touchdowns. Like so good. It was unbelievable. Like, wow. And such a terrible yeah. guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's fun. It's like AJ, it, AJ Brown reminds me of, Oh, this is what it's like having a all world guy, you know, on your team. Yes. It's, it's really cool. Yes. Except AJ is a good guy. <laughs> I I was asked to do they did I don't I forget who they was mm -hmm. but they did a roast of Terrell Owens uh in the at the Crystal Tea Room in Philadelphia and I I want to say it was um Joe Conklin was the the MC like the roast master so he asked me to do something for it to like roast TO and so this is again years ago mm -hmm. and I so I was on the dais and instead of roasting him I forget if he asked to do this, but whatever. Um, Carl Bakuti and I made a video about T like making fun of T.O. And basically we were like, hey, T.O., he now that you're retiring or whatever it was, here are some business ventures you can go into. Oh, and like yeah. here they are. And what what we did is we came up and uh Carl's dad and his sisters were there, it was a the whole thing, and uh, you know, there to watch him. Like he, they bought all this money and they're like, all right, it's time for uh chip chantry and Carl Bacuti. So I'm like, you know, it's all these Philadelphia sports here. So we stand up. And as soon as we stand up to walk to the podium, the lights go down. And cause we're supposed to talk for a minute or two. Oh no. Set so that, up oh, what the no. video is like, I was going to play the thing of like, Hey, I'm going to be your new agent TO. And these are all the things that you can do. So all of a sudden uh, I stand up, the lights go down. The video comes up. You don't understand it because it's not set up. Plus, the volume is like basically all the way down, so you couldn't see anything. And then the Ugh. lights come up, and it's just me and Carl standing there, and it's just To sitting there. And we just shook his hand, and we jumped off the back of the stage, and <laughs> and left. I won't be able to sleep tonight thinking about that. Yeah. That's wild. And I will say, say what you will Great about To. I don't, but like, I just remember that night. You know, you think he's this larger than life character. He was just a deer in the headlights the entire night. He just mm -hmm. didn't know what was happening. Like he was it's very like, disarming. It's it's so it was so crazy. Yeah. Wow. Um yeah, there was a list that came out recently uh had TO at number four for greatest wide receivers of all time. Like Obviously, number one is Jerry Rice and then Randy Moss, but T.O. was like third or fourth. Yeah, He's I see so that. So strong, so fast. I mean, he was just such a force. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we are just about out of time, but um, this has been the Drew and Me podcast. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Thank you, Blake and Chip, for being on this was a lot of fun thank you guys for being on this, this is a blast. blast thank you yeah thanks so much Drew. this is this was so much fun to do yeah this was cool um let's see so do you guys have any championship predictions for teams this year i gotta say probably probably the baseball team looks pretty good this year mm -hmm. i feel like that's our that's my that's our, guess. Yeah, I, for, yeah. for, for my very limited knowledge, that's if I had to guess, I'm gonna go with the Phillies this year. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'd say so too. I'd say the e e e Eagles probably. I, mm -hmm. I would say the Eagles have an outside shot. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. Cool. Sounds great. Uh, thank you guys for watching, listening. This has been Drew and May. All right. See you. Bye. Thank you so much, Drew. Thanks, Bye, Drew. Chip. Yeah, take care.